Hello everyone and welcome back to JJD TV. I'm your host Josh and with the 2022 World Cup coming to a close, it is time to start looking to the future. And what does that mean for the Canadian national team? I don't entirely know, but I know one big factor will be recruiting dual nationals. It's something that John Herman has done an incredible job with, and I'm sure he's not going to slow down. So for today's episode, I'm going to take a look at three dual nationals that I believe should be at the top of that list for John Herman. So hopefully you guys are excited for this episode, and if you are, as always, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub, and let's get into it now. Now it's time to give a shout out to the legends over at OneFootball, who are the sponsors for all the World Cup content on the channel. One Football will absolutely keep you up to date during the World Cup as you head to the app, search for your favorite national teams like Canada or Germany. Now go give them a follow and watch your homepage get populated with stories that you will care about as they happen. You can also track matches live in the app, check out starting 11s, watch videos from behind the scenes as well as interviews, highlights and so much more including the ability to watch full matches directly in the app from around the world. It's truly an incredible app to help you stay up to date with everything going on in the beautiful game. I personally use OneFootball every day to track Canadians playing abroad and I highly recommend it for all of you watching. So click on the link in the description to download the OneFootball app. It helps creators like myself. Thank you all so much everyone. Now let's get into the episode. All right, everyone. So the very first dual national we are discussing today is Justin Smith. Now Justin Smith is number one on this list for many different reasons, but before we get into that, let's get into a little bit on his background. Justin Smith is eligible to represent France and Canada, and he represented Canada at the U20 level for the 2022 CONCACAF U20 Championship where he captained the side. It was a bit of a disappointing showing from our Canadians, however it does show that Smith is encouraged at the idea to play for Canada. Now Justin Smith is right now on the books at Nice, he's on loan right now at QRM in Ligue 1 but he's found a very difficult time to even break through at that level and he's been featuring for their second team. Not the highest of levels you want to see right now, but at the age of 19, he is the profile Canada is looking for because he can play as a center back and a CDM. And those reasons right there is why he's number one on that list, mainly because Canada lack depth in those areas. When we look at the center back position for Canada, we have players like Kamal Miller, Scott Kennedy, Derek Cornelius. We have the Newer players that are probably going to get integrated over the next couple years in Lucas McNaughton, Joel Waterman, of course, Alistair Johnson, who can play on the outside of the right center back three. And we have in the middle, Steven Vittorio, who at the age of 35, we don't really know what his future looks like. That leaves some openings there. And the fact that Smith played against PSG in a friendly at center back is a good sign playing against a club like that. Even though it's a friendly, it could be a nice step. And it's interesting that he featured at center back, but he can also feature as a CDM. And... The number one thing I like about Justin Smith is that he's very technically gifted. He's got very high footballing IQ, which a lot of those traits suggest that he could feature as a CDM. Maybe a couple of years down the line could kind of take over for like a Samuel Piet. I really liked him. That's where he featured for Canada, which is also a fun fact. So when I'm looking down the future, I do believe that Smith, if he is to play for Canada, will feature as a CDM. But just given the fact that he can play as both and Atiba's on his way out, this could be a massive player and I hope that eventually Canada is going to integrate him into the side sooner rather than later, maybe an upcoming Nations League match. But the number one thing we have going for us is the fact that France probably won't ever call him in unless he has a giant, giant step putting the ball in Canada's court. The second dual national we are going to discuss is Luca Colyosho. Now Luca Colyosho should be a familiar name by now, but for those of you who need a little refresher, Kolyosho is eligible for many national teams, the United States, Nigeria, Italy, and Canada, and he was actually called into two Canadian camps, although he never actually made it onto the pitch, and he did feature for the United States at the U15 level. Right now, he's currently playing for Espanyol's B team. He's had a few appearances with Espanyol in La Liga, but hasn't been able to really lock down a role with that side yet. And on top of that, he plays as a winger, which I know Canada has plenty of wingers, but the fact that this kid is 18 right now, in four years time, he could be 22 years. You never know when that jump could happen. They got the United States and some other national teams targeting him. And if he's able to take that step, this could be a player playing in a top five league in La League in a few years time. And with the 2026 World Cup, I know it's still four years down the road, but this is when dual national recruiting comes so important. And John Herbin knows that. He's already brought Luca Colioso in. He showed him what it's like, the atmosphere, the big names, Davies, David, and he had the 
the balls. Let's say that John Herman had the balls to say, you know what, you're not ready for the World Cup, which is fair. None of the players on my list today are ready really to start or have any impact for Canada right now. This is one for the future. And John Herman is doing work right now on Luka Kuliosho. And there's hopefully an opportunity down the line where we're actually going to be able to cap him in potentially a Nations League game or a Gold Cup. Kuliosho still has a lot of work to do, especially just to lock himself down in Espanol. But this World Cup is years away. The opportunity for him to do so is there. And we need to beat out those other national teams because we need to add depth to this team because we never know what type of player he could turn out to be. The third and final player on my dual national list is Daniel Jebison. Again, a very familiar name for Canadian fans out there. A little background on Jebison is that he is eligible to represent three national teams, Jamaica, England, and of course Canada. He has played for England at the U18, 19, and 20 level, and he's never featured for Canada yet, although the door is open. Conversations are definitely being had between him and John Herdman. At the age of 19, he plays for Sheffield United. He does feature with the first team and comes off the bench, but he mainly features with the U23s right now, and he is out with an injury. The reason he's number three on my list is simply the fact that he's a striker. We have Jonathan David, Kyle Lahren, Ike Ugbo, even Lucas Cavallini, among some other players. It's just not the priority at that position, but he's still a crucial piece to this future. He's 19 years old, so is Smith. Kolyo shows 18 in four years' time at the 2026 World Cup. Those players will be 22, 23, and 23. They have huge steps to take because honestly, all three aren't really playing at the level that they're at. Jebson's not playing with Sheffield United, mostly with the U23s. Justin Smith isn't playing with QRM, usually with their second division side. And same goes with Cole Yosho, not really featuring for Espanol, but with the B side. Doesn't matter. These guys have massive ceilings. They are dual nationals. Other countries could come after them against Smith, Jebson. There are some countries in, in there that probably won't, but the fact is that they are open. And if they do take a massive step, they do a big moment, some way, shape or form, there could be coming some interest in them and that makes it a little bit more difficult for Canada. So for me, these are the three clear players that I think should be one, two, and three for John Herman to prioritize over the next four years. Whether it's a Nations League in a, in a few months or a year's time or a Gold Cup, start integrating them in, start getting the interest and hopefully cap them down. So these are just three more talented players in our depth pool and hope they take that stride to become players that could be crucial for Canada in the future. Now as a bonus, I am gonna throw a couple more names at you guys as well and we're going to Scotland for it. These two players happen to be brothers. That's right, it's Victor Laturi and Willie McKeo of Ross County. Now, both of them came from the Canadian Premier League, which is pretty special, playing for the same club. But the first one we will take a look at is Willie McKeo. Now, we did an interview over on One Soccer with McKeo. It's a pretty interesting interview because he did play a couple friendlies and a couple matches for South Sudan, but he's still eligible for the Canadian men's national team. So at the time of recording, I don't know if the interview is out yet. If it is, I highly recommend you go check it out. But if it's not, keep an eye on the One Soccer YouTube channel because that interview will be dropping eventually. Akio is eligible for South Sudan and he's played a few matches, but right now, according to Akio, that he is still eligible for Canada. So if Canada want to take a look at this player who made a jump from the Canadian Premier League to Scotland, I know he's battled through injuries right now, but he's starting to become healthy again. He scored a goal in there as well. At the age of 24, he's still got some experience to do and some growing to do in that league and this could be a very important depth piece very quick winger as well and i'm excited to see what akio can turn into laturi is another interesting one again similar to his brother obviously he's eligible for south sudan but he's also eligible for canada he's 21 he's a few years younger than akio and he's really starting to find a home in scotland this is a talented young cdm a position that canada definitely really wants to continue to find and the fact that he's playing in europe right now Playing regularly and playing well for Ross County is massive. I would argue right now he's got a step ahead of Justin Smith, just given the level he's playing at, but it wouldn't surprise me if Victor Latoury is going to earn a Canadian call-up soon, just given the fact that, again, we don't know what Atiba's future is looking like. That is a bit of a light position right now, and with a young player like this finding himself in Europe, it's always an intriguing prospect. And there is an extra player in there as well. There's three Canadians on that team. Ben Payton is one as well now. And that is kind of exciting that there's three Canadians on one club. Definitely one for you guys to keep an eye on, but keep an eye on that story to see if Akio will potentially feature for Canada one day and hopefully Latoury as well. Those are two talented brothers and I'm really excited to see what their future has in store. Now I want to hear from you guys down in the comment section. Who is the number one dual national you want to see get cap tied to Canada first? Really excited to see what you guys think about my list and if you would change anything about it. And I really hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, as always, be sure to drop a like, drop a sub, and we'll see you soon. Cheers, friends.